Hi, welcome to Freezer Meals 101. I'm Christy. And I'm Sharla, and we are bringing you one of our famous mega meal Whoa! marathons today. You've been waiting for this, you've been asking for this, and we are here. It is time. Our freezers are bare. Bare. We've like, done a really, I don't know about you, yeah. I do know about you. Our freezers are bare. We have been really diligent about using everything up and getting and, ready for this session. Yeah, and it just so happened that we had a friend have surgery last week, That's and so right. the rest of my meals went to help her out, and so we are like bare, bare freezers, and we are ready for this. So for those of you that haven't seen one of our marathon sessions before, welcome. Christy and I have been doing freezer meals together for over 11 years. It's true. We had both been doing freezer meals separately and then her family bought the house two doors down that way and it was like providential. And in our first meeting, that's when I'm like, well, I do freezer meals, wait a minute. You do freezer meals, I do freezer meals. Totally. And she was a little hesitant to try them out with me. <laughs> I was, I had been burned before. You had been burned. And it, and it hadn't always gone well with others. And, and so we tried yeah. it out and I knocked it out of the park. <laughs> I was here to work. Asked her audition with flying colors. I did. So then I was granted <laughs> in to the freezer meal circle of Charlotte. <laughs> For life. For life. For life. You can't get rid of... No. I wouldn't do it without you now. No. You know? No, I know. Like, I, we occasionally do freezer meals on our own, like, and it's a not? sad event. It is. It's, it's very sad without each other. <laughs> so we get together once every three months, and we make enough meals to feed both of our families. Um, Christy's a family of four, and we're a family of nine, and so we're feeding a lot of people here. We really are. Hungry people. And we will easily do over 100 meals. We don't know, we don't know what our total is gonna be when we're done here. No. It's always a surprise. We have, Christy does up our labels, and we have a lot, a lot of labels. This is 14 pages? pages, and I would say that this is probably a record for Pages of labels. That's 140 labels. But. Yeah. Like our record is 150 meals. Yeah. But we have at least a few meals that aren't on here because there was a oh, the sale, sale on pork tenderloin. Yes. And we, you know, we didn't know when we planned the meals because usually we do plan around flyers, sales, and, you know, we we budget accordingly, right? but we didn't know about that when we planned. And so obviously when I was at the store, I'm going to get the dollar 49 a pound. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. absolutely. Like we'll make that into something. And so we're going to make a few pork tenderloins, not as many as we would have if we had known about yeah. the sale and planned all the other ingredients to make a bunch of different recipes but with that's them. Okay. We make it work. But we'll make it work. And so we are going to be doing a lot of meals today. We're not sure how many, but Probably at least 140. Well, well today, today and tomorrow. tomorrow. Yes. It'll be an all win video for you. We are under no illusion. We don't want to give you the illusion that we're doing this all in one day. No. We shop, we prep, and lots of times we shop and prep in one day. Yeah. And this time it was a shop day, a prep day. And then now we're here and assembling. Um, Two assembly days. Now we have gotten faster and faster at this as time has gone on because little tips and tricks over the years we have learned so many things and each time that we do one of these mega sessions and even the little sessions in between we take something away and learn and tweak our processes and so we've gotten so much faster mm -hmm. and that's why we do this that's why we bring this to you so we can share those tips with you so that you can learn from our mistakes <laughs> that's true and like freezer meals have made such a difference in our lives and how we eat and how we shop and how just even that stress factor of not having to think about what you're making for supper is a big relief and we want to teach people how to do that so we're really glad that you're here with us today and that you're joining us and you can throw us on in the background or you can sit and be glued to your screen for what could be close to a two hour video. So hang yeah. in there with us. Our last mega marathon, I had a really hard time editing it down to just over two hours. It would have been 
probably close to three if I had left in all of our talking bits and stuff. We're chatty. But I... We won't be today. We're going to get right to the meals. We're... Right away. I promise. <laughs> we'll probably be chatty later, but we are going to get to the meals And if you fast forward through some stuff, we want... our feelings won't be hurt. It's no, okay. <laughs> it's true. So we're going to do a lot of meals, but we're also bringing you, of course, some of our tried and true, but lots and lots and lots, lots of, new ones. of new ones. Oh, yeah. So we, we try will, them for you so that oh yeah and we eat them we freeze them we make sure that they do the thing before we tell you that you should do the thing right we like before they end up on the website or in the club we'll get to that yes so join us we're gonna have so much fun we're probably gonna need some caffeine good music and we have our good shoes on I haven't put mine on yet so. I have. <laughs> I have shoes at her house permanently now that these are just my shoes. These are what I put on because our feet get sore. You're on your feet all day. We are, we're doing this We're thing. ready to rock and roll. Let's go. <laughs> the very first recipe that I am going to start with is a new one for us. It is a spicy chicken marinade. The reason I'm going to start with it is it's a little bit more involved because it involves a blender. So I'm gonna get that out of the way so that I can move the blender out of the kitchen and have a little bit more space for us to work. So into the blender, I'm going to put some tomato. We're making four of this recipe and so each recipe calls for one tomato quartered um, and then some onion, just sort of rough chopped, some jalapenos, fresh cilantro, garlic, olive oil, soy sauce and lime juice. We're gonna blend that until it's smooth and then we're just gonna pour it into each of our bags over the chicken thighs. Christy went ahead and prepped all the chicken thighs yesterday so they're all trimmed and ready to go which is so nice and it's gonna save us a lot of time today because they're already in the bags. We can just throw in the marinades or the sauces or anything else that goes in there and it'll be done. I'm really excited to try this one. I like things with a kick, so really looking forward to this new recipe. This tandoori chicken is a new one for us. It starts out with our bag of chicken. It can be chicken breasts or chicken thighs. Today we are doing thighs. We add plain yogurt, some lemon juice, olive oil, paprika, fresh ginger, now we like the squeezy tube ginger because it comes, you don't have to grate it yourself. We use enough of it over the course of our mega sessions that we can get through a tube or two of these. And we're gonna add uh, finely chopped garlic or minced garlic and kind of the same idea. We use the jarred garlic because again, we don't really have time to sit there and squeeze each one in our press. We're also going to add salt, curry powder and some chili powder. We're gonna mix it all together. We're gonna to make sure we get all of that air out of the bag because air is the enemy. It's gonna cause that freezer burn. So we wanna remove as much excess air as we can and we're gonna lay it flat to freeze. This is mustard grilled chicken. It is a new one for us, but we've got quite a few Dijon mustard type recipes. So I'm thinking this is gonna be a winner. In our bag, we've got our chicken thighs already we're gonna add a third of a cup Dijon mustard, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You could obviously put in less if you don't like things spicy. Two tablespoons red wine vinegar, a quarter cup of olive oil. That's it, we're just gonna squish it together to combine it in the bag and then take the excess air out, seal it, freeze it. And this one can be cooked on the barbecue or you know you can cook it stovetop oven all the usual things so enjoy this recipe is sticky chicken we've made it plenty of times and it is on our website you should check it out the link is below we start out with boneless skinless chicken breasts or chicken thighs today we are doing thighs we're going to add in olive oil soy sauce peanut butter and ketchup and that's it
we've got some more chicken that Christy prepped. So we've got chicken thighs. We purposely bought extra because we wanted to invent a recipe. We always like to do that. And we so, wanted to take advantage of the case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because the it's less expensive if you buy a case of chicken thighs at Costco. So this allowed us to do that. We actually talked about, we have a video, we'll put it above, where we talked about um, saving more money on your meat by buying in bulk, putting in orders, meat orders with your grocery store, and buying cases of certain things. So you can check that out if you're looking to save more money. I rummaged through my pantry. I found a thing of sun-dried tomato and oregano salad dressing. I am going to split that among the four bags and I'm going to add some Greek seasoning, some mint, some lime juice, capers, olives. I'm kind of going to try to create like a Mediterranean chicken. I think it's going to be good. We'll see. <laughs> on the day that we serve it, we could sprinkle some crumbled feta on top. I think this would be really nice or you could put it on a sheet pan and put some baby tomatoes on the sheet pan and some purple onions and then some feta so just kind of create like a Mediterranean feast this sheet pan cashew chicken starts out with two boneless skinless ch chicken breasts in a bag they've been chopped up into one inch cubes to that, we're going to add some snow peas and some raw unsalted cashews. In a second bag, we're going to add coarsely chopped yellow pepper, red pepper, orange pepper, and purple onion. Then we're going to mix in a bowl some soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, sesame oil, garlic, and ginger. We're gonna mix that together and then divide it evenly between the two bags. We're going to staple these bags together and freeze them like that. So on the day of cooking, you're gonna do this on a sheet pan in your oven at 425. We'll start out with the veggies. We'll put them on first and cook those for 15 minutes. And then we'll add the chicken, snow peas, cashew mix because they won't take as much time to cook. And we'll do it for another 15 minutes. Then when we serve it, we can sprinkle with some green onions and some sesame seeds. And this is fresh and awesome. I would probably have this with rice, but I think a really nice stir fry noodle, like a chow mein or something like that would also be really great with this. That would be really good. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about this I am one. so excited about this And one. all the colors and it's a sheet pan meal, which I love. Which we love. So. We'll see how it goes. Lemon pepper chicken is one of my all-time favorite freezer meals. In fact, a while ago we did a video of our favorite freezer meals and this was easily the top of my list. I make it all the time, even in between our mega sessions. It's easy, I almost always have the ingredients and so it is so fast to put together. And it's delicious, it's bright and tasty and lots of flavor. So in our bag we have our chicken thighs, although you can do this with breasts as well. We're gonna add in some lemon juice, garlic, lemon pepper, cayenne, and that's it. You wanna squish those ingredients around to make sure you coat your chicken and get all, all your excess air, seal it up and freeze. To cook this, you can do it in your oven for about an hour at 350. Uh, you can do it covered and then uncover it for that last 10 minutes. If you're doing it in your skillet, I usually do it over medium high heat, same as the barbecue, um, turning occasionally, letting it get browned. And then, you know, lately I've been using my meat thermometer a lot, so I'm really big on going to like 165, so, or maybe a little higher because they're thighs. I don't, I'm not trying not to overcook my chicken because sometimes it gets dried out and then it's no good. So, so chicken is fully cooked at an internal temperature of 165, just so you know. Um, and we have air fryer instructions for this bad boy. They aren't on these labels today, but we definitely can do these ones at my house anyway. Um, preheat your air fryer to 380 for five minutes. Then you want to cook for 20 minutes. At 380, you want to turn it at least once. And again, I like to double check that that internal temperature is 165 before I serve it. You want to let it rest a bit. This glazed ham is one that I've been making for years, but I've actually never made it as a freezer meal. 
I do know that it's going to freeze beautifully and it'll be great to pull out for Easter this year. So that's my plan. In your large freezer bag, you're going to add uh, a small ham or half of a large ham, I guess. And you can, you can easily double the sauce for this and add a full ham. If you add the full ham, then you want to cut it in half so that you get more surface area covered with the glaze. In a bowl, you're gonna combine some brown sugar, half a cup, a teaspoon of dry mustard per, uh, per recipe, one teaspoon of horseradish, and two tablespoons of Pepsi. You're gonna mix that together and pour it over your ham in the bag, rub it around to coat it, and then uh, remove your excess air, seal it, and freeze it. On the day that you're going to cook this, this cooks up in your slow cooker. You're going to pour two more tablespoons of Pepsi over it and cook it on low for five hours. Because of the size of our family, I will probably take out two of these bags for Easter and that way it will be a whole ham. So we are at the sort of the end of the morning first yes. day. We're mid midpoint of the first day. And we're going to sort of break. We're going to, um, I'm going to have lunch and feed my kids lunch. I have like, everyone at my house has a cold. And so every, like, no one went to work or school today. So <laughs> we have a house full. My kids are at school today, but just the way life goes sometimes, she has an appointment today and I couldn't move it. It was the only way I could get it to happen so i'm actually going to leave charlotte alone for a little while with uh with her lunch and her sick family and <laughs> i'm going to take my daughter to her appointment and then i'm coming back so she might actually come back with me and we might all uh pitch in and i will work on meals while christy's away but i you know i will also probably and you'll see and her milling around in the B-roll a little bit. Charlotte's mom is here, and we always love having her here because oh. she washes dishes for us. She's encouraging. And she's lovely. She's kind, yeah. and she's the Energizer Bunny, and we love her. And so we have help today with the dishes. I had help with prep. We do, okay, we want to talk to you right now. We're going to, again, pop in with tips throughout the video, but we want to talk to you about a few things right now. One is a tip for you is to do your like proteins together. Yes. So this morning we did all chicken. All that chicken that I prepped yesterday is totally done. What we used to do in the past was kind of wherever the wind blew us is, I'm tired of doing chicken. I'm gonna do salmon for a while and I'm gonna switch to beef, but you have to put it away. You have to get it back out. And it is faster if you just bam, get your chicken done. Yes. It really, really is. And so we're not totally done chicken because we still have some, we've done chicken thighs and the uh, cubed raw chicken so far, mm -hmm. but um, we still need to do some chicken breasts and some cooked cubed chicken. But the cooked, I mean, we it's it's cooked and cubed and in the fridge. And so we could even do that tomorrow. We'll, we'll do it as its own protein, right? Yes. It's its, it's own it's. type. But so we've done 32 meals so far, ah, which is pretty awesome. Really good for, there are some times where we get to the midpoint of day one when we've done like 20 or, yeah. and we're like, oh, this is going so slowly because either we aren't done our prep or they're just involved meals or if for whatever reason, it takes a while to get us going, you yeah. know? I think the main thing is the prep. And so that's the other thing that we wanted to talk to you about is first, if you want to try to stack your freezer so mm -hmm. that you can get rid of all of the stress of having to think about like, what am I gonna make today? And did I remember to take something out? And did I remember to get the groceries? And yeah. do I have a plan? And do I have time? We want you to never have to think about that again. So we want you to get your freezer stacked, but disclaimer, sometimes it's best to not start with a marathon. Now, we both did, we jumped in feet first, both of them, yeah. um, But and some people can do it, but if you really just wanna dip your toe in to freezer meals, the best way is to just start by doubling your dinner. Yep, yep. take those like tried and true recipes that, you, you're, that you're already anyway. making anyway. You're yeah. making a chili or a spaghetti sauce, make two, I mean, it takes you just 
minutes more, if that, to just double it and eat one tonight, freeze the other. Yep, and it will save you many minutes on the other end. Yes. It's almost not fair. Like it's yeah. so smart to do it that way and it really, really works. Because if you're browning your hamburger anyway, you just might as well just brown, brown twice as much and then, you know, again, put, like freeze the other. So when we do these mega sessions, because we're doing so many meals at once, we do a day, Christy was saying earlier, of like shopping and prep. So we've done a prep video before. Yes, we do. We'll link it we'll up there. We'll put a link up there. Of what we do and for our prep. you can see what we do. It, there's a lot. The other way to make your freezer meal experience way, way, way easier than we're making it on ourselves, because we're the, we're the test kitchen, right? We are the designers. But there is a system that we have for you yes. to make this so much easier. And it is the Freezer Meals 101 Club. And you should join it. Join so that... It takes all of the guesswork out of it for you. The recipes are tried and true. They're, they've all been, you know, frozen, thawed, um, like cooked. And so we know that they work, but you're not joining for the recipes. No, the recipes are mostly available just on the main website. It's a bonus. There's some re recipes that are exclusive for club members, but in general, you're not joining for the recipes. You're joining for the system. You're joining for the system because you're going to create a meal plan based on our recipes. There's click, click, click. Over 200 recipes and we add more every month. So you make your meal plan and you can click, click, click and have an ingredients list, your, like your shopping list. It will also tell you what prep you need to do, like how many onions do you need to slice? How many do you need to cube? How many do you need to be chunky? How many do you need minced? And it will tell you that so it's all laid out there for you. And then the best part, we have labels. Labels, printable labels. Now you've seen us use our labels in the video, obviously. Um, so the labels allow you to have the cooking instructions yep. on there. Right there. And it has the on date your bag. on it. Yeah. You can just pull it out. You don't have to look up the website or anything. It's right there. You can cook it. Your husband can cook it. Your kids can cook it. It's great. And you can gift it to other people. Because That's right. Because you had just given some to yeah. our friend that had surgery and bam, she can just make these meals. In short, I guess our, our mid morning tip for you is do your prep because it makes things so much easier. Oh, so much easier. Join the club so that you don't have to do the prep of creating your own shopping list and your own prep list and all of that. And start small start with a week or two weeks and the club makes that super easy too and there's some meal plans in there where you can design your own or you can use some ready-made ones but yes work your way up to a big marathon like this yeah um if you do decide to do a marathon it is way easier to do it with a friend that's way more fun too yeah. and you know this thing where christy's ducking out to an appointment that we both have lives that's and real life right we, we're moms and that has happened like a, over, you know, 11 oh, many plus times. years. It's happened lots of many, times. Many, many times. And sometimes it's me and sometimes it's you and it just... We just make it work and it's okay. Yeah. So... There's a lot of grace in this kitchen, I think. Absolutely. Because we it's have already counted how many mistakes we've made this morning. And there have been a few. Yeah, and um, been, Especially with the filming. It's like, oh, we forgot to film. That I didn't have my light on. Part, and, I, you know... And I, put the wrong whatever it's um uh, i uh, when i was filming the the very first oh, thing right. with the, that we did with the blender. blender and then i forgot to add the cilantro in um i realized it before i went to pour it in and so then i added the cilantro into the blender and blended it up and it was all nice in there and realized that forgot to video that part. So it's gonna look like there's no cilantro in that, but there is. But there is cilantro in it. <laughs> there really is, I did, I did catch my mistake, but I, I didn't get it on film. So um, so we're real, it's just, it just it, this is not perfection. It's just um, part of the fun. We like to say done is better than perfect. And uh, there's a lot of done is better than perfect That's here. That's right, so, we're gonna get that on a t-shirt someday. But 32 meals so far. I feel and really good. Stick with us because we're going to be moving on onto other proteins mm. and uh, it's going to get exciting. <laughs> Sorry. It's going to be exciting. a different kind of chicken. I know. <laughs> I'm excited too. Okay, for 
this baked Caesar chicken, you're going to put one cup of Parmesan cheese that's been grated in a medium sized bag. And in your large bag, you're gonna have four boneless skinless chicken breasts. Then you're going to add some creamy Caesar dressing, the kind that you find in the produce section of your grocery store. If you wanna get the one that's extra garlic, that's fine. Whatever your preference is, is super good. Um, then you're gonna add some sour cream and about a half a cup more of the Parmesan cheese and a little bit of pepper. You're gonna squish that all together to combine. You're gonna seal it, of course, getting your air out. And then you're gonna staple the bag of the extra Parmesan cheese on top. And then on the day that you go to cook this, you can of course top it with that Parmesan so it's nice and like gold and brown and crisps up beautifully. This is, we've only been making it for about a year or two, but it's a really good one and it's really different. We've had great reviews from our viewers who've tried it and even picky kids seem to like this one. So you can find the link to the recipe in the description below. For the lemon pesto chicken, we're actually going to put half a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese in a medium sized bag. And then in our large bag, we're gonna add some boneless skinless chicken breasts, pesto sauce, lemon juice, and salt and pepper. If you want, you can also add a little bit of lemon rind if you just want a little extra zip. And in our large bag and our small bag, we'll take out the excess air, um, seal it, and then we're going to staple those bags together above the seal. And that way, on the day that you go to make this, you can sprinkle that mozzarella cheese on top and you'll have everything that you need for this meal. You can find a link to the full recipe in the description below. After I portioned out all of our chicken breasts, I was left with two, um, not because I miscalculated, just because it was either by too many or not enough. So I bought too many. And with these two, I just threw them in a freezer bag and I'm just gonna make a mini barbecue shredded chicken. It won't be a full because for a full, I would probably use four chicken breasts. Um, this is a great one because you can uh, put it in the slow cooker and shred it uh, and serve it on buns with coleslaw and some garlic mayo. We've talked about it in other videos before, so you're probably familiar with it. I'm just gonna take a guess on the amount for the ingredients because it's not really a recipe that you can mess up. And um, because I have less chicken breasts, I'm gonna end up with less sauce. So we're just gonna do some barbecue sauce, cider vinegar, and minced onion and garlic. recipe is called Giggle Pig Pork Chops. Now, a while ago, Charla and I made this recipe and we just kind of cobbled it together and we didn't have a name for it. So in the video where we did this recipe, we said to our viewers, hey, shoot us your names and we'll have a little contest and please name these pork chops. Well, the winner, <laughs> was by a viewer named Anna who left a comment of Giggle Pig Pork Chops and I'll read what she said. Giggle Pig Pork Chops in honor of your fun-loving kitchen. Sounds right, about right to me. And the thought of families reminiscing many years from now 
about grandma's giggle pig recipe makes me laugh even more. I just love funny names for recipes. My husband's family has a cake called the wrong one because they got it very wrong once and they loved it better that way. I can understand this because we have a cake at our house called germ cake. We don't know why it's called germ cake, but if you make germ cake, that's what it is. It has dates in it and it has a, a walnut, uh, brown sugar and chocolate chip crumble on the top. And it's really delicious, but that's germ cake. Who knew? It's just basically a chocolate cake. So the giggle pig pork chops go like this. We start out with your six bone in pork chops. We're going to add soy sauce, oil, minced onion, minced garlic, lemon juice, and some liquid honey or melted honey. On the day when you go to cook this, you can do it in the oven. Now, these are not super thick pork chops, so you'd want to do maybe 350 for 35 minutes and then check it. Um, pork is fully cooked at 145, uh, 145 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you can do these on the barbecue and discard the sauce. Just do them on the barbecue and they are going to grill up perfectly. So as I'm bagging this up, I've noticed that there is a leak coming somewhere from the bottom of this bag. It does sometimes happen with pork chops that have bones in them because the bones can be sharp. So my options are to transfer this to another bag or I can just double bag it. So that's what I'm gonna do today and then it's important that the bags stay dry before you put them into the freezer to prevent them from sticking to each other. So if there is anything on the outside of the second bag, I'm gonna have to make sure it's super dry before I get it into the freezer. This recipe is honey ginger pork chops and you might laugh at us if you've been a fan for a while because we went on and on and on about how we didn't have a good pork chop recipe. But I was going through the freezer meal archives also known as our old PDFs of freezer stacks that we had from years ago. And I found this, it's honey ginger pork chops. And I have had these and they are very good and they're worthy of uh, presenting to you today. So you can go ahead and make these. We start out with six pork chops in our bag. We're gonna add a quarter cup of soy sauce, a clove of minced garlic, some ginger. We use the squeezy tube, remember, so we don't have to grate it. Uh, some sesame oil and some honey and some brown sugar. Now we're gonna make, the, I put all of these in a bowl and then add them in because I like to pre-mix it so that once it marinates in the pork, it can be more even in the liquid. Sometimes the pork chops have bone in them that is a little bit sharp and they inevitably poke holes in the bag. And so we sometimes we double bag our pork chops because we don't like leaks. These are great for barbecuing, or you could do these in the crock pot or in your oven. So pasta puttanesca is a pasta sauce that is named after ladies of the night, apparently. Anyway, um, my husband and I made it for a date night, and then I attempted it as a freezer meal, and it was good but not perfect. So I've been kind of tweaking that recipe. And this time we are trying a one pot pasta puttanesca. And I'm really excited because I'm a fan of one pot meals because it means less dishes. And also I recently got to have puttanesca again because when Christy was hosting Supper Club, she did a pasta puttanesca, but she did chicken with hers as well. So she added a protein and I think she cooked the chicken right in the sauce. Yes. So yeah, there you have it folks. She cooked the chicken right in the sauce. As this is, it's vegetarian, but you can add chicken breasts in there and uh, then you can add some meat if you would like. So for our one pot pasta puttanesca, we are putting in our bags some olive oil, anchovy paste, minced garlic, San Marzano tomatoes, which are Roma tomatoes, and we're gonna use the mix and chop to break those up. Um, the recipe that I found suggested breaking them up with your fingers, but I'm squeamish, so I considered doing it with gloves and Christy suggested the mix and chop. So <laughs> we're gonna try it this way. Um, and then you're gonna add some pitted Kalamata olives, some capers, red pepper flakes, salt, pepper, and 
three cups of chicken broth. The reason we want so much liquid in there is because on the day that you go to cook these up, you're actually going to add your spaghetti noodles right in, and this is going to cook all together, and those spaghetti noodles are gonna absorb all the amazing flavors that are in this Mediterranean pasta sauce. This chili casserole is a new one for us. I have regular ground beef and Mexi veggie beef for Charlotte. Um, in each of our, in our bags. We're gonna add in some minced onion, diced tomatoes, a can of green chili, uh, green chilies, one and a half cups of water, a tablespoon of chili powder, some salt and pepper, and optionally we could include some canned corn if we so choose. And in a separate bag, I'm going to put a cup of long grain white rice, and then I'm gonna staple the two together Make sure you staple above the seal so we don't have holes that will make leaks. And then when you go to cook this, you're going to just add the rice right into the casserole dish and stir it in and then bake at 375 for an hour. And the rice will cook right up and it will all be one dish. Okay, this next recipe is a chunky bolognese sauce. Now we do have a bolognese uh, recipe in the club and I think on the website maybe um, but definitely in the Freezer Meals 101 club there is a bolognese but you know we always like to try new things and try to find even better the one in there is really really good but um, and it's a one pot so it's a bit different but this is a chunky bolognese sauce in our large freezer bags we've got our ground beef that's browned now in my bags I have a veggie beef in Christie's bags, we've got actual beef beef, diced onion. In Christie's bag, I'll be adding celery. In mine, of course, due to the allergy, not. Um, some chopped zucchini, garlic, and then some cooked bacon that's crumbled because bacon makes everything better. Some diced tomatoes, two cans of tomato paste per bag, two cups of water which you could add now or you could put a note on the bag to add on the day that you go to make this um, some italian seasoning salt and pepper kind of excited to try this one because i think that with the bacon and the zucchini and you know kind of the vegetables in there it's gonna be well it's called chunky so it's gonna be nice and chunky and bulky and good so just a little bit of a different take on a pasta sauce here Earlier I was saying that I really am a fan of the one pot meals because it's less dishes, it's just super easy, plus pasta is comfort food for me. So now we are making a one pot creamy sausage rigatoni. This is a new recipe for us. One of our favorite recipes is a sausage rigatoni bake. Um, it is from Candy at Make Ahead Meal Mom. We've made it in quite a few of our videos before. We love it. So the hope would be that we can have those same kind of flavors, but make it even easier because we're not having to cook the pasta up on the day that we make the freezer meals. We're not actually really having to cook it up at all because we're cooking it in the sauce on the day that we make this. So if the flavors are comparable, then maybe we'll start making this instead of that. But that one, Christy's tough giving me a look right it's now. Tough to beat. It's so <laughs> it good. is hard to beat that one. And that one does have like fresh basil, which we could add to this, but. And it's already made too, because we do it in foil. But it is more of a, more, more work, because you're, you're boiling the water, or boiling the noodles, and then draining them, yeah. and then, you know, on the day. But, Anyway, stick with me here. We'll see how this goes and uh, we'll probably end up making the other one again anyway, but maybe this one will get added to the rotation. In our bag, we've got browned Italian sausage. I'm using spicy Italian sausage in the bags for our house because our family likes things spicier. I'm using mild for Christie's. Then we're gonna add one cup of chicken broth, one cup of heavy cream, 
some garlic, Italian seasoning, tomato sauce, salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. That is it. So this one should go together really quickly. And then on the day that we go to make this, we're going to add some rigatoni right in the same pot that we've got this. And we're also gonna add some fresh spinach. So this one will have a little bit of veggie in there. recipe is garden taco rice. We have one pound of ground beef that's been browned. We're going to add in some chopped onion, taco seasoning, chili powder, some zucchini, some cooked rice, some corn. I'm using frozen corn today because my rice is still a little bit on the warm side. It's not completely cooled, so I want to balance it out using the frozen corn. And a can of green chilies, and some diced tomatoes. We're gonna to mix those all together in the bag and then we're going to staple it to a bag that has shredded cheddar cheese in it. Then pop it into the freezer. When you go to cook this, you wanna defrost it and then you could just fry it right up in your skillet, sprinkle the cheese on there and let it melt and bon appetit. This lemon lentil soup is a new one that we're trying out this time. We are going to put into our large freezer bag a diced onion, some diced carrot. We're gonna put celery that's chopped into the bags for Christy's family, not for my family because I have a celery allergy. Um, then some minced garlic, red pepper flakes, cumin, quite a lot of green lentils and salt and pepper and vegetable broth. Now for the vegetable broth, we're adding six cups, which is a lot. So you can either put a note on the bag to add the day of serving, or you can add it now. Um, it'll take up more space in your freezer if you add it now. What I'm gonna do for mine is I'm actually gonna add two cups of vegetable broth per bag and then um, put a note to add another whole pack of vegetable broth on the day of serving. I just think that way there's gonna be at least some liquid in there and it kind of help with the whole freezing process, um, but it won't make a hugely thick bag. So this one you can cook up in the slow cooker and if you are like Christy and you have issues with texture, you might wanna run an immersion blender through this before you serve it, you're gonna actually add three tablespoons of lemon juice, which is gonna to help to brighten it up. And I think this will be a really nice vegetarian soup option. This is another new one to us. It is a sriracha roasted cauliflower and chickpea sheet pan meal. And this one, we've been making a lot of sheet pan meals this year, really loving them. We actually taught a freezer to sheet pan cooking class and the link for that is down below if you're interested in taking that free cooking class. Um, it comes with a PDF with your recipes and shopping list and labels and all the things, but um, lots of variety in that class. This recipe is not in that class, but in our large bags, I put some cauliflower florets. Now, we got the bags of cauliflower florets from Costco and I found that they were giant. So I did go ahead and kind of break them apart a little more just so that I get a more even cook on the day of cooking. Then we're gonna add a can of drained and rinsed chickpeas, some olive oil, sea salt, and pepper. That's it for the large bag. So we're gonna give that a shake, uh, take out the excess air seal it and then in a bowl we're going to mix together some sriracha some low sodium soy sauce a little bit of maple syrup apple cider vinegar 
ginger, again from that squeezy tube, some sesame oil, and chopped green onions. When that's all mixed together, we're going to divide it into medium size bags and we're gonna staple those onto the large bag so that on the day you go to cook this, you're going to cook the chickpea cauliflower mixture on your sheet pan for 20 minutes and then you're gonna to toss that with the sauce from your bag and then broil it for six to seven more minutes so that it crisps up and it's nice and sort of crunchy-ish. That's it for this one. super organized it we were very organized like wasn't lack of prep or anything it would there was just a lot of people here and a baby and like you know and, and I left for a while yeah and and I mean life goes on but we got it done so here's our grand and total for today 77 we made 77 meals today I think that's a really respectable day one total it's a great day one total I, it's probably not our record I think we've hit 80 before but um, but it's awesome. But that's maybe when we were both there and oh wait, we weren't filming back then. No, so when we're doing the meals and filming them, it takes a lot longer than if we were just assembling the meals and weren't worried about, you know. You know, did I get the Yeah, and do we have things out of the shot and you know, is it all, all those things. The things that you guys don't need to worry about when you do this at home. And Christy's family came over to eat their supper and so I wasn't able to get home to make the supper and I am literally out of freezer meals. Like, I mean, obviously I put meals in my freezer today, but I just looked at the chili casserole that we made today and I said, you know, I'm going to freeze one. I'm going to make one tonight. And so my family came over to eat and we've already tried it and it's delicious. I think we're gonna add garlic to the recipe. Yes, we can report that the rice does in fact cook up it cooked in it. It all the way through. It was very nice. And um, reports were very positive. I'm kind of well, thinking Now about listen, it. what all did we complete oh, today? yes, we yes. We have to tell you, we finished all of our chicken thighs, all of our raw chicken period. Yeah, all of our, our diced, raw chicken, our chicken breasts, our chicken thighs, all the raw chicken is done. Mm -hmm. The ground sausage is done. The pork chops are done. And okay, a note about the pork chops. Um, we did mention it in the pork chop videos, but in case you're sort of fast forwarding and didn't see that, with the bones in the bags, sometimes you get rips. It just pokes a little bit and it's enough to leak. Now, if you have leaks in your bags, they're gonna stick together in your freezer. So you you want, what we ended up doing is we double bagged. Any any of them that had a leak, we double bagged. And some of them I even looked at and I'm like, this could leak, Right. Could I'm gonna rip. double bag yeah. it. So it's, um, yes, and then when you go to thaw it, it will make a mess. So it is important to make sure that you double bag those. Yeah, we don't double bag really anything, anything else. No. But just because of the bones in the pork chops, we have found that to be an issue before. Um, I also put my pork chops in another freezer because they don't lay as flat right. as the other ones. So the ham, the glazed ham meals that we made today and the pork chops are in my secondary freezer. I know not everybody has a second freezer, but when you right. have a giant family, you probably do. Yeah, um, you might have more than one freezer. <laughs> you might. <laughs> and so, um, but the rest of them, you know, lay beautifully and I'm gonna yeah. show you. What and what else? I wanted to mention, we always add our liquid last mm -hmm. because the bags get 
tippy and it it went really well today because we had prep done and we had we a had dishwasher mom, um, <laughs> so who helped with opening cans and dishwashing and and baby and you know all the all, all the, the things. things yeah so that was super helpful and um yeah i think we are we're in good shape for tomorrow we even got the rice made um today for yes. the meals tomorrow it's because cooling in the fridge right now i did do one tonight that it was still a little bit warm putting it in the bag it's gonna have extra condensation probably a little extra frost in those but i think it's okay like i'm not yeah and you added the frozen corn to try to make it i added the frozen corn she's like you could use canned corn i'm like no i'm going frozen on this one we gotta we gotta balance this sucker out cool it down yeah. you know, as quickly as possible so now for tomorrow we have that rice ready we've got all of our prep done for tomorrow. So we'll just be right ready to go in the morning. That's true. Bright eyed and bushy tailed. <laughs> so we're gonna do some cleanup because that's real life. And then we will be back. Um, this garlic, this minced garlic was full, like unopened. We opened it. <laughs> to, and, and we have gone, you know, to here. So part of that was Christy's husband added some garlic into He his. did. Thing, but you know, but and in he general, took, he took some rice. Oh no, your son took some rice with oh, your supper. Did that, he? Yes, he oh, did. That's so funny. It was funny. It's okay. Oh, so actually, we have lots. I should mention that I um I took out two freezer meals from our last session because you know you want to use those first, and so um one of them was a tortellini soup, and so oh, yeah, that's what my lunch. kids had for lunch, mm -hmm. and the other one was Kathy's lazy roulade, and so that's what my kids had for supper, and apparently one of them wanted it with rice. <laughs> and there was like a giant pot full sitting there, so he just helped himself. <laughs> we have lots; it's fine. Easy to make more <laughs> if we need it tomorrow. <laughs> if we're like one cup short, we'll be like we'll know where we it went. Know who that <laughs> we know who the culprit was. That's just fine. <laughs> Welcome back. We are on day two of our mega meal session. And it's going really well. I, you know, we're always a little more tired on day two. Mm -hmm. My hair is always in a ponytail because I don't, I'm not gonna take the time to do my hair on day and, two morning. And for me this morning, I was the opposite. Yesterday, I was still doing prep in the morning. So it wasn't a ponytail day for me, but it was a, you know, t this morning yeah. was a fresh wash, fresh style. I don't know if it looks that way, but I, I had to start from scratch. And uh, yeah, we have different, that's funny. Sometimes yeah. I'm ponytail day too. Okay, and today we are, we're where I feel like we're like doing an ad, but we're not. But we're both wearing new shirts, which we is are. like, you know, because the other day I stopped, um, I had some errands to run, uh, actually appointments. And so I was, I was in the country um, by this town called Ardrossen. Anyway, there is this, there's this cutest, the cutest shop. shop and it's in the country like it's it's an old farmhouse it's in an old farmhouse on a farm like it's yes. it's just the cutest like, little thing cows in the back yes literally there's cows and you, you pull up into the driveway like it's just so cute it's called unboutiqued and so i was there and i i got this shirt and um and she the lady me. yes the lady that was there was, was so helpful I, I guess she's shop. the owner. I didn't know that. It's her shop. Until Christy told me. Yeah. But um, so I called Christy and I was like, I'm here and I'm getting a shirt for filming. But I like, I saw things that are, are more you than me here. And so I'm like, you should come. And she's like, well, I don't have time because I have the con That was the night she had the concert. the concert. And so she's like, why don't you just get them for me? And so anyway, she goes, Oh, is Elizabeth there? Which again, I didn't know that I was being helped by the I've owner, been there a few times. Who was so helpful and just and she was like, I was telling her like, these are the parameters that I need because they're for filming. It can't be this, it can't be that, it yeah. has to be this. Like, and she was so helpful. And so she's like, Is Elizabeth there? So I, I was like, Are you Elizabeth? <laughs> anyway. And she's like, yes. And so she's like, Elizabeth will know if it runs true to size, if it, you know, how yeah, it fits, whatever. If it fits whatever. big, if it fits tight. Yeah. And like, no word of a lie, Elizabeth actually said to me for one of their shirts, she was like, well, I'm not sure because that one is brand, brand new, but I'm the same size as her, so why don't I put it on? <laughs> and it's true. And then, and I'll so she literally put the shirt, I mean, talk about a 
amazing service. Like she put the shirt on and then she was like, she's a little bustier than me, so on her it would hang a little different. Like it would hang like this. I put that I tried it on this morning and I knew exactly what shirt you were talking about. And it's so funny. I didn't I don't think that one, it didn't end up fitting right in the sleeves in the okay. end, but yes. the front was so pretty and very neat. You did a great job. Yes. But she picked this out for me, and I'll tell you, if I saw this on a rack in the store, I wouldn't have probably picked it out. I do like usually a more, you know, solid color or a plainer pattern, um, and there's a lot going on here. And I was also thinking, okay, this apron. I made this apron. A lot of people ask about my aprons. I have a lot of them. If I see a cute one, I'll buy it because I'm like, I'll wear it on camera. And I've been needing to make them. So I spent a little bit of time last weekend and Isn't I made this cute, cute little apron. Like look at the bows and the, and the pockets. I don't oh, yeah, see the pockets. pockets, but like. And so the first thing I thought was, I really like this shirt. It fits so good, but I don't know if it's gonna go with the apron, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because the shirt's cute and the apron's cute. And that pink is perfect. I think it's great. It goes. So it... she did well. Elizabeth did great. Thank you. <laughs> so we, you know, we look all refreshed and ready for day two. <laughs> On day two, we are, yesterday we finished so many of our proteins. And mm -hmm. like we told you yesterday, we work with one protein at a time, get all of those done so that it's way faster and we can move on to the next. Yep. So today we're doing beef that's non-ground beef. So we've got beef strips and beef um, cubes. Do we have a, a beef? Oh, it's the carne guisada. Yeah. I was always thinking in my head that it's gonna be a roast, but you're right, it is a stew meat. Yeah. And there's a baby here. <laughs> You can there hear is him. a baby in Making the background. Happy sounds. Everybody else is quiet on the set but him. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it's okay if he makes noise. Everybody else quiet on the set. <laughs> He's very happy. <laughs> um, so we're also doing all our seafood today. Mm -hmm. So um, Christy had that over in her fridge and freezer and brought that over for yep. us to work on today. And we're doing ground chicken and cooked chicken. like chicken that's already cooked and cubed yeah. um and that's all we have left we actually finished the vegetarian recipes yesterday, yesterday. yeah um and so <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're in really good shape i'm feeling like we're going to be able to bang this out i and the other thing we are doing today is the individual serving stuff so i know some of you live on your own and really look forward to those things. And we do them for a variety of reasons. We give them to our parents at times, um, but also I actually just, my mom was here helping yesterday with dishes and yesterday I sent her home with one of our individual lasagnas. Oh yeah. Um, and she was really happy about that. I was like, this is like payment and not nearly enough right? payment. But if you can pay somebody with food, do it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and she was really, I'm, yeah, but, and, okay, you know, I'm going to put a video there for um, the individual loaf pan meals that we made that mm -hmm. included the lasagna, the pizza tater tot casserole, meatloaf, which my family apparently loves meatloaf. And because I don't eat ground beef, oh, I, don't, that's funny. I don't make it that much. So often when we do freezer meals, I will do meatloaf for our family ahead of time and yeah. before I even show up here. So we don't count them. I just, I'm in freezer meal mode. I make two or three meatloafs, get her in the freezer. Um, so this was, I think the first time we'd really done it here. Yes. And, and your family like demolished them. Like my family, they were like, we're, we're sitting down and one of my sons was like, meatloaf is my favorite. And I'm like, how would you even know that? And he's like, when I was a kid and I used to go to my friend Nathan's oh, house and his funny. mom would make, Mrs. Um, Buckholz would make the meatloaf and, and she, it, it was like my, I had um, no idea. So I think, should we start putting it in so our regular we're, rotation? We're going to be putting meatloaf in our regular rotation. So probably. This family that has eaten veggie beef for 20 <laughs> years because of you. Yes. Loves meatloaf. That is the funniest thing I've ever heard. I love it. And then I was telling them because we used one of our meatloaf recipes for, for those ones, but we have a different meatloaf recipe with the barbecue sauce, yeah, yeah. right? And so I was telling them like, oh, we actually have another meatloaf recipe. And they were like, with barbecue? Like, that sounds amazing. You gotta make that. So yes, 
Meatloaf is gonna go into the rotation. That's so funny. Meatloaf will go into the rotation. It took me. It took me eleven years, but I got it. I just had to. We just had to trick them into it. We didn't. Like. We will pop back in and do some more updates for you, and uh, I think it's gonna be a fun day. Oh, absolutely! It's starting out uh, rocking for sure. This is everything bagel salmon. I love everything bagel seasoning. We did a video a while ago of some seasonings that you could throw this together and make your own, and it is really, really good. This is the best. I'm using some of our homemade stuff today, and this will go right onto the salmon. So. In the big bag, I've just por portioned out my salmon and I'm going to just close it up and that is done. In a medium sized bag, I'm going to add in cream cheese that is the spreadable kind and then four to five tablespoons of the everything bagel seasoning. That's like a quarter cup. And then really on the day, and I'm gonna add in some capers. So on the day of cooking, Charlotte and I were talking about the best way to do this. I could either try spread it on now and make it all go into the large bag, but we think it would be easier if on the day of cooking, we spread our salmon out on the tray and then mix the cream cheese and the everything bagel seasoning together and the capers and just spread it on at the time. There is a possibility, I have a feeling I might have to actually whip it. I don't know. We'll see how easy it spreads, but you can freeze cream cheese and you can freeze spreadable cream cheese. It will still spread. I just don't know how it's going to go on the salmon. So I'll be sure to report back on how it goes, but uh, it doesn't matter how it goes on. I know it's going to be delicious. For this chicken fried rice, pretty much everything is already cooked other than like your onions and carrots. It's just going to be a quick reheat for this. Um, we've got our cooked rice that is going in the bag, then cooked and cubed chicken, celery in the bags for Christie's family, not ours, uh, onion, carrots, a can of sliced water chestnuts, which add a really nice crunch and are delicious, some frozen peas that I have a, an abundance of in my freezer right now, so I'll be glad to use them up, um, some minced garlic, oyster sauce, and soy sauce. This is my Tom Giselle's recipe, and I have been eating this since I was a little girl, so of course we had to find a way to make it into a freezer meal. Works really well. Um, for this, I'm gonna do Christie's in the full bags. For our family, I'm actually gonna mix it together in a bowl, and I'm gonna portion them out into the medium size, quart size freezer bags. That way I can take these out for quick lunches for myself or um, if any of our kids need to have a late night snack or whatever, this is just a quick like single person meal. So if you're looking for individual freezer meal ideas, this one works really well. I've made this a few times for my dad and my mother-in-law and uh, it's just a really, really good one for that kind of thing. If you do that, again, you just wanna mix it all together in a bowl and then portion it out. This is the first time we are going to try make seafood creole. We are excited about the recipe because the ingredients look amazing and it's different from anything else that we have right now. So I'm gonna start out with two separate bags. One bag is going to have the seafood in it and the other will have the rest of the soup and stew ingredients. So I am going to do a half pound of shrimp, half pound of scallops, and half pound of crab meat. Now we're using imitation crab meat this time because we have another reason to have that crab meat for a different recipe that has nothing to do with freezer meals. So that is why we're going with that one. And something that you'll find interesting in the stew portion is that we are going to use Clamato juice instead of V8. It calls for V8, which is like a tomato juice with lots of veggies in it. In Canada, Clamato is really popular. We use it for, instead of Bloody Marys, we have something called a Bloody Caesar. And it was invented in Calgary in the 70s, and it is delicious. And it has all those, that tomatoey goodness, but the clam makes it, the clam juice in it just really lightens it and brightens it. And it's not heavy like a tomato juice. So you will find, um, if you use this, the clam also will go nicely with the seafood, which is another reason why we chose it, because we do have access to tomato, sauce, tomato juice here. 
Um, so the other things that are gonna go in the stew bag, I'm gonna put the clamato in last because it's the, the soupy part. Um, we're gonna start out with green peppers, some celery. Now, I'm putting celery in mine, but not in Charlotte's because she's allergic. Um, we're gonna also add onions, garlic, paprika, salt, pepper, parsley, and a little smidge of cayenne to give it some kick. On the day of cooking, you're going to bring the stew portion to a boil, uh, you let everything thaw, bring the stew, the soupy part to a boil, reduce the heat and simmer for 20 minutes and let those flavors melt. And then we're going to add the seafood and simmer for another five to seven minutes once everything is cooked. You wanna serve this over rice. Now, I chose to use shrimp that has the tail on and then right now when I opened up my bag, I realized that they are tail off. I would have preferred tail on. The tail does give a lot of extra punch in the flavor when you're cooking with seafood, but I got, grabbed the wrong one, so today we have tail off. For our tuna casserole, I'm gonna go ahead and make each one in a large bowl because this one is so full if you do the noodles up ahead, which is what we're doing this time, that you actually can't mix it in the bag. So I'm going to mix it in a very large bowl and then transfer it into bags. Now for the ones for Christie's family, I am doing them in the large bag and doing like a large family size. For our family, I'm going to be putting them in the quart size bags because my youngest daughter and I are the only ones that like tuna casserole. So I will just be making these for her and I and they'll be great for me to have for lunches and uh, great for her to have because it's her ultimate comfort food. Um, so in our large bowl, we are mixing together egg noodles that we have cooked slightly under what the package recommended because on the day you go to cook these in the oven, they are going to continue cooking a bit and you don't want them to be mushy. Then we are adding uh, two cans of tuna that are drained some onion, shredded cheddar cheese, two cans of cream of mushroom soup, some frozen peas, again, I get to get those peas out of my freezer, yay, uh, some red pepper, some pepper, and we're gonna mix that all together really well and then portion it out into our bags. Now, with this one, you do have the option to make just the mixture without the noodles, and then on the day you go to cook it, you would cook your noodles up and stir the mixture in and then bake it. So sometimes we have done it that way because I'm making the individual ones for us. Um, I want it to just all be ready to go into the oven and just easy peasy. So we're doing the full meal deal today. When we had decided all of the meals that we were going to have, our shopping lists were done and everything was settled, um, we got a flyer from our local um, grocery store called Save on Foods that they were having a throwback deal of pork tenderloin, it's frozen, for $1.49 a pound. Now, that is unheard of. Uh, we haven't seen pork at that low of a price for a really long time. And, I mean, pork can fluctuate quite a bit, but and sometimes you can get a really good deal on, on tenderloin, but not like that. So this is what we have here. It is this pork tenderloin. It is frozen. There's two in there. So I have one and Charla has one. And we thought, what is quick and easy that we can throw together for these frozen pork tenderloins? Well, I'll tell you, it is pork chop rub. I have been using this for years and years and years and years. I got it from my friend Anne Marie. I make my own. And in the pork chop rub, you will get half a cup of sugar, half a cup of brown sugar quarter cup coarse salt, two tablespoons black pepper, two tablespoons dried minced onion, a tablespoon of paprika, and a tablespoon of garlic salt. I'm gonna take the rub that I've already made, put half a cup in each of our bags, and just put it in the freezer along with our pork tenderloin. On the day of cooking, you wanna thaw your pork tenderloin, rub the rub onto each of the halves, or it's not halves, but each of the pieces, and let it sit for anywhere up to about an hour. The reason this isn't a tr tried and true freezer meal is because really once it gets longer than that, 
starts to crystallize and do weird things. I have tried it at home without success. So I find it better to use at the time. So we are going to put it on, let it sit for a bit, and then I like to make my pork tenderloin in a really hot oven at like a 450 for about 35 to 45 minutes. Pork is cooked when it is 145 degrees Fahrenheit internally, and you wanna let that rest, and you want to then slice it up. Now, something else I will mention, because of the amount of sugar in this, it will burn at those high temperatures, it can burn. I always use parchment paper so that it doesn't stick to my pan and it tends to not burn. It'll be better that way. This can also be done on the barbecue. So last night in our Freezer Meals 101 group on Facebook, I put a photo of my empty freezer with kind of a, you know what that means. We're drumming up some anticipation. People ask us all the time, when are you doing your next mega session? So yeah. we drop hints, you know, it's coming, it's coming. It's been three months, our freezers are bare. Well, and I think people are realizing, because we've been doing it long yes. enough, that they're like, okay, it's been three months. Like It's, I, they're, it's time, right? This is around the time. And I think right? it's been four, because we did our last one in November, December, January, February, March. Uh, somebody in this in the group, Maria, um, said, "Hey, since you guys are filming tomorrow, yes, can you put in the video what you thought of the brand new recipes that you made last time and which ones you would make again?" And that's a great idea. And actually, someone else was asking in the YouTube comments if after this mega session we, we can could do that. Do that, and so we are going to do a video from the meals for this session about what we thought. We'll probably do it like next week when we've had a chance to try some of the new ones. Um, but- And I'll tell you right now, the chili casserole, it's good. Because that's, that's, that's what I had last week. We, we are gonna do that about last session. So we'll put the video here about that shows you those. We did do some new meals and so I wrote them down and we're just gonna go through and tell you which ones were keepers and which ones were not. There were some knots. There were some knots. More some than of them you know about. <laughs> yeah. So in that video, we did talk about the creamy pork, creamy crackpot pork chops that were terrible. They were a pass. And I think we just did three, three of them. And somehow I have ended up with all three. Yeah. So the first one, I made them the way they were supposed to be made. The second time, I tried to save them by making the sauce separate and I couldn't save them. The sauce just, it separated and it looked gross. And so this third time, I'm just gonna consider it a marinade and I'm gonna scrap the sauce and I'm gonna just make them like you would make pork chops and they'll be fine. <laughs> we also had made a taco black bean and rice. and rice casserole. No. When I was visiting family in December, I was staying with my brother. We were there for my dad's funeral and I stayed with my brother and you know, there's always so much going on during a funeral time and it's family time and he's gonna have a house full because he ended up being the host for a lot of it. So I thought, oh, I will take some meals because that's what a good guest can do. Like I can offer this, right? So I took the lasagna soup. It was such a hit. It was amazing, amazing, mm -hmm. amazing. I took the taco and black bean casserole. Sorry, Christie's family. And I, I warned everybody. I'm like, okay, this is a new one. It sounds really good. It, but we, everybody, I need your honest feedback. And it, it just wasn't. It just missed the mark totally. And then I was embarrassed. And I'm like, next time I go, I am only going to take stuff that I have had before. Tried and true. <laughs> Tried and true. So they got to be part of the process and they understood. They were getting They were very kind. <laughs> They were very kind. Right. And it was okay. So I, I, yeah, just next time I think I'll choose more wisely. So don't make the Don't make that one. If you look back in the old video. Meh. No. Um, the Parmesan Brussels sprouts were not only good, we have made them since in an since. air fryer video um, and in another, uh, not a video, but we made them another time. Mm -hmm. And, and they're part of like, the they rotation. will go in the rotation. They'll go in the club. And they'll be in the club. And so that's more sides in the club. We have a lot of mains. We have a lot of soups. We do not have a lot of sides, but we are building. It's We're getting there. It's getting there. And so that brings us to another thing that we have just added to the club. It's mm -hmm. kind of exciting. And that is, so we made in that video, we made Oreo pie, this frozen Oreo pie. And uh, 
is a hit. I mean, but I knew. I had made it before. I knew it was going to be yeah. a hit. You I, we had, had never had it. Had it. And yeah. It was a hit. <laughs> and really, we didn't have ours until like a few nights ago. And there was fighting over the last piece. <laughs> So it is now in the club and it is delicious. Uh, and, what else is just new in the club is the apple so, crisp. Yeah, because we've added desserts. Yes. So that is that is a, a new thing in the in the club, the Freeze Meals 101 club, that yeah. we've added desserts. We've also added an air fryer. Um, kind of method you know, of so cooking. So that you can click on air fryer and it'll generate all the air fryer. And we're, slow, we're slowly getting to it. As we come across them, we will add the conversion in there so that you can you can do air fryer stuff. Um, Christy's got an air fryer for Christmas, so that's why we're, we're, we're kind adding of doing it in. more air fryer recipes. Um, and so, yeah, we have a dessert section in the club now. And I just recently experimented with another one. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we're going to add that in there. But yeah, an apple crisp, which um, works great and we freeze as well. Yes, and we also have uh, the other change since the last big video that we've done about the club is that we mm -hmm. just, just added an option after it was asked for a lot um, to do a monthly membership. It still makes a lot more sense to do the annual. Um, right. And so a lot of people do just, go, they, they know they're just gonna dive in and do this. And so they do the annual, but if you're really not sure, if you're hesitant, if you just wanna try it for a few months, if you wanna see like, you know, how do I feel? I don't know about freezer meals. I don't know about right? freezer meals. Then we do have yeah. a monthly option for you. So that's sort of the club news. And but it is well, exciting and people are jumping all over it. Yes. It's, there's been a flood. So it is welcome to the new members. We will, uh, I don't know if you know this, we do every month a little welcome to the club um, members video and we don't yes. say everybody's name quite like reading room or... No, but we, we write them all <laughs> we down. We write them all down. And we, we really... We um, love our club members. Yeah, we, we know who you are and, uh, and we appreciate every single one of you. So also in the club, you can find the shake and bake recipe, which is mm. another one of the meals that we tried yep. last time. It was the shake and bake chicken. And it was obviously a hit. It's already, you know, it's already in the club and uh, it's it, awesome. It is awesome. Um, and also new was the Moroccan style chicken, which I kind of invented. You did. And my husband had it and he said, I don't know what that was, but you need to make it again. It is the best chicken I have ever had. And that's high praise coming from him because he isn't, he would, you give him a steak and you give him a chicken and he'll pick the steak every, he will pick the beef every time. So yep. to get this man to love chicken, it has been like Charlotte's mission and she's great <laughs> at it. She is knocking it out of the park. <laughs> and so we've got him on board uh, and that one will find its way into the club because that's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be in the rotation, the yes. Moroccan style chicken. Um, another one that is uh, a, a definite and you now know it's a definite is that at the end of the last session with some of the things that we had left over, I invented a recipe, um, garden taco rice, and we we liked it so much that that we tweaked it to you know make all the conversions work and make it mm -hmm. freezer meal whatever happy and and because I, I had to actually write it down because when I'm inventing things like so I have right. since written it, it because down. if we don't write it down then we have to go back through the video if we really <laughs> liked it and we want to make it again we're like dang it <laughs> what were the measurements, what were the measurements and how much do you think I put in yeah. so we liked it so much that. It is going in the club and we made it this session. Like yes, we made we did. four of them. Yeah. So, you know, so that is um, that a was definite a win. Mustard crusted salmon. We've been making it for years at our house. Um, that was how I learned to cook salmon, um, was this really old website. I tried to find it and it isn't even there anymore. But And we were thinking of other salmon ideas and I'm like, I've been making this one for years. Let's see if it can be freezerized. frozen, let's freezerize it. And it turned out really well. So it is great. We've ha had to tweak a few things cause we have to like Charla eyes it and Christy eyes it a yeah. little bit too, you know. Um, and it's in the club now too. It's going in the club. It's going in the club. So we're just waiting for photos because there's a process. We, <laughs> we are not the best photographers. We have talents. We have we great, have, we have great talents. talents. 
Um, Christy is amazing at graphic design and I, all kinds who of, knew? you know, admin things and organizational things. That I knew. Um, my brain is very creative and I have a brother who was at one time a photographer, but I am not a photographer. So, but I'm just not. It's something we hire out. Yeah. So. And we're grateful for her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we're so thankful. She is amazing. And yeah. so, so when we, when the we. Baby. <laughs> So when we have things that, you know, make the cut for us, then we send them on down the line to her and and then she makes them and and takes beautiful photos of she, them. She does. And so then then they get into the club. So so that's the thing there. Sorry, we're laughing because the filming with a baby in the house is a new a newish thing for us and uh and he's he is just turned seven months uh, a few days ago, two days ago. And he is on a mission. Like, he, he is, is crawling to... He crawls the whole house. He pulls himself up on furniture. He walks along, like, holding onto the furniture. And he's starting so at strong. seven months. He's starting to sa stand unassisted. Like, <laughs> and he They're climbs. in trouble here. Like, they are in trouble <laughs> here. In so much trouble. And so, as we're, we're filming, like, like we my him. daughter's chasing after him. But he, he is, like, you know, we can hear him trying to crawl into the room where we are and see you hear the like you know the hands on the, on the floor so anyway that's why just in case you're wondering so that you're in on the joke <laughs> um, we're not being burgled no it's a baby <laughs> it's a baby <laughs> so the next one that we tried was shrimp curry mm -hmm. and it's it's going in the club too it was very good it was good it was um i don't think it's like 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 whoa like earth shattering but i mean but i would not be embarrassed to take it home and feed it to my family <laughs> if i went home for my dad's funeral which <laughs> you don't have to do again i will not have to do that again <laughs> so no. that's but i am sorry that you had to do that yeah again. i know me too yeah <laughs> so um so that is that is our update on the the meals from the last yeah session yeah and, and so we're gonna try Yep. We are going to. We're going to do a video. We're we're actually talking about it because another suggestion we had from someone else oh, yeah. was, um, how about you film somewhere other than your kitchen when you're talking about things not cooking? Yes. And so we we have like um, once or twice we've filmed. Well, the the ones where we welcome club members, things like that. We've filmed them in my living room. Um, but we were thinking for this one, we'll actually have our tea and coffee and like sit, sit down on the couch and have a little podcast have a visit. kind of and talk about our meals. Yeah. So we're going to just show you like what, how these went, the new ones from this session. And, uh, we won't have had time to try them all by then, but we'll have a Probably good, not, but we'll you know, do that. We'll have a good idea of what we liked and maybe Christy will try some, we'll try Others we should coordinate, so we're we not could try coordinating. Yeah, that's ah, right. Or not. Life's <laughs> well, hard to coordinate. Life's hard to coordinate, and as organized as we are, we are not quite in each other's back pockets. Like we, no, we do have our. We do have separate. We're lives. not conjoined at the at the hip. <laughs> um, even though I'm buying your clothes for you now. <laughs> it's so true. It's so funny. Um, we should show them your tea towel. Okay, Christy bought me this tea towel. <laughs> because mm, if you've watched our videos for a while, then you know that I don't love dishes and have, you know, a lot large of children. Family. <laughs> and you're not. Dishes is always a battle. Yes. At this house. And now um, we've shown you the enough. sign over by the sink. It says, Is it your dish? It's a flow chart, and there's only one answer, and it's <laughs> yes. Is this your dish? Yes. Then you rinse it and put it in the dishwasher. No exceptions. <laughs> Sometimes it's adhered to, sometimes it's not, and one day... That's like the tenth sign I've had. Oh, like you've had a lot of signs. You've been on a strike. Some of There's... them are meaner than others. Not mean. This has been like... the most effective, you said. Yes. It's time to change it up, though. We should do it like in hot pink or something. It, it's time to change it just to like get their attention. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so I was at... Um, it's kind of a nice... It's Friesen Brothers. It's a nice grocery store here and there was a rack that had some pot holders and some tea towels on it and I saw this one and it stopped me in my tracks and I'm like I need to get this for Sharla and it says this is my protest dish towel and I don't know, even know why it's funny just I can just see her being so mad washing and, and drying her dishes that her children were supposed to wash yes because you know like not that much 
much gets me upset. Well, gets me angry anyway. No. But like this dish thing, I think I hit my, I, d I did all the dishes for everybody for so many years without a complaint and I never tried to make them help, which is my fault. Totally. My, learn from my mistake. But then when I, when I hit where they were like young adults and older teens and I was like, okay, like enough. Do your dish. I was like, just clean up after you, just the dishes. Like don't even, you know, not even anything else. Well, they do their laundry, but I mean, you know, um, and once I hit that wall, it was like, I, I the empathy was gone. Yeah, this like, <laughs> angry part of me came out, which is, which is kind of funny because I'm not usually that way. But anyway, so <laughs> this one thing in my life, <laughs> like, do your darn dishes. <laughs> so this is my protest dish towel. Everybody should have one. It's too cute. <laughs> okay, um, we're going to get back to cooking. Thank you for joining us on that segue. Um, and I have one segues. more thing to say. Yeah. I've been meaning to say it like since yesterday. <laughs> okay. And I'm just going to give a shout out to Roz because I met you in Costco and we talked to each other and you're like, you saw me taking a picture of tikka masala to send to her because I was excited about it. And then you're like, why do you have so much chicken in your basket? And I'm like, well, let me tell you. And we talked for 20 minutes and she was kind and lovely and she said she was going to start watching. So I wanted to give you a shout out to Roz. Um, welcome to our crazy lives here and I'm glad that you're tuning in. And did she take the picture of you in front of She me? didn't. There was another lady that was kind of in the area at the same time. And I, taking a picture of a <laughs> case of tikka masala, it's the same people who make the butter chicken. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be good. And I didn't buy any stupidly. I should have. I should have because we had extra chicken and we, yeah, we talked we were to both like, Did you buy oh, the tikka masala? Just dump the jars no. of tikka masala. In so while I'm taking this picture, these two ladies come around the corner down the aisle. They're not together or anything. And I said, sorry, I have to take a picture of this to send it to my friend. And they waited for me as if we were at a theme park. <laughs> very kind of them and and the one lady not Roz the other lady I don't she didn't stick around to chat she said would you like me to take a picture of you with the tikka masala and I'm like okay and so she did really they just kind of she moved on she she had things to do um and Roz and I stopped and chatted for 20 minutes and you know, I, we have talked about it a little bit. She's mostly interested in those individual meals because when you live alone, it is hard to cook for yourself. It's hard. Because yeah. you make something and then you have to eat it for four days or you eat the same thing every day. We, or you don't cook at all and you're eating yeah. unhealthy things because, you know, sometimes opening up a bag of chips and having it with dip is easier or, than making a meal and a side and a starch. You know, one of our viewers said she had just been opening up a can of beans and eating that. And like that, we don't want that we for you. Know. Like, and, and even if you live alone, you don't have to eat that way. Like there is a different way and, and you can make it so that on just a Saturday afternoon, once a month, you're making enough. For the month. Last you the rest of the month. You know, and you could do five days a week of freezer meals and have something different, like almost every day. Yes. Without really having to cook, cook. Because a lot of them, we have a lot of, we make meals for our dad, her dad and my father-in-law. And, and my father-in-law doesn't cook at all. So it goes in the microwave. And so, you know, we want, we want to have that for you. So actually the club is a great option for seniors because... You, you can, can change take, the serving you size. You can change the serving size, or you can make the regular size meal and just make it into smaller portions. And and you've seen that here today with the uh, the tuna casserole. And with the chicken fried rice. And with the chicken fried rice. Yeah. So definitely freezer meals are for everybody, and we love our seniors, and we love our people that live alone, or, in, or just couples, because sometimes it's hard to cook for two as for much two. as it is for one. And I think what I've heard too, and I haven't experienced this yet, because our kids don't seem to ever want to move out. Um, they make it too good for them here. Uh, so, it's a fridge full, of, a freezer full of food, why would they go anywhere? We do have one who is... One has no. left well, and never yeah, come back. And, and he's, no, and he is. So um, what I've heard, though, is that people that have had large families yeah. and then their kids have moved out and moved on, 
they really struggle yes. with cooking for just one or two because yes. they're used to making like like feeding an army, which I'm used to doing. And right. So then, you know, how do you go down to just feeding one or two of you, right? So yeah. I again, I have what not is figure is one on one going to look like in ten years? Because even then, my kids might actually finally be gone. Yes, you and your kids will be, will be. You'll have more grandchildren maybe by then. Yeah. And my son has already said, "Mom, when I go to college." Can you still make meals for me, or could I have a free membership? Yes, <laughs> you can. Yes, you can. I'm sure we can hook you up. <laughs> so cute. Yeah, because he sees the value, too, yeah. of the variety and um, the convenience of being able to shop from your freezer every day. And the recipes are good. And they're so good. he wants to continue you, to... <laughs> you know, we're picky, because that taco black bean... Thing and is and, in the, there. Pork and chops, the pork chops. Oh, we have better pork chop recipes. Pork you chops. saw two yesterday. Have them. They're good. It's actually that video that got us on the quest to, to find, find a real pork chop recipe. Yeah. And that's why they are called Giggle Pig Pork Chops because we just <laughs> threw some stuff together and that's what it turned out to be. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, we're going to get back to cooking and uh, this is, yeah, it's a fun day. I'm going to start some ground chicken recipes. Uh, we have discovered that in our area, at least, ground chicken is much less expensive than a lot of the other meats. So in our never-ending quest to save money on groceries, we have been actively trying to create ground chicken recipes, and we've been pretty successful. So the first one that we're doing here is ground chicken taco meat. We have made this one before and it was an experiment that time. This time we know that it's a keeper and a winner. But what I discovered the last time that I made the ground chicken taco meat was that it is amazing on nachos. And I love nachos. So this time I'm gonna go ahead and make two bags for Christy of just the regular taco meat. Um, and so for that, I'm just doing uh, a pound of ground chicken that's been cooked up already. And then uh, I'm gonna add a little splash of olive oil and, or a couple splashes of olive oil, actually, and four tablespoons of taco seasoning. Then she can cook that up for a regular tacos. For our family, what I'm doing is in a bowl, I'm mixing together two pounds of ground chicken. Again, that's been browned, or not browned, but cooked. And I'm gonna add some olive oil and taco seasoning, and then I'm gonna portion it into medium size, quart size freezer bags, because then it will be perfect for me to pull out to have on my nachos. And I'm super excited, and actually, I think I will make myself some tonight, as a matter of fact. Do you also wanna say that because we were making so many recipes this time with ground chicken, I had 14 pounds, of ground chicken to cook so I put it all in the slow cooker it barely fit and it was a little tricky to stir actually <laughs> it was it was quite heavy to stir but that is how I um, prepped all this chicken so if you're doing a lot at once that is an option we almost did our ground chicken um, it's a Thai chili chicken lettuce wraps recipe it's not as frugal because it has cashews in it, but we almost did that this session too, because I figured, hey, we're, we're cooking up all the chicken, we might as well. And I'm so glad that we didn't, because if we did, it wouldn't have fit in the slow cooker and I would have had to do two rounds. So I'm really glad that we only are doing three ground chicken recipes and not four. Now we're gonna make ground chicken sloppy joes. Before I started, I just wanted to mention something that we do is we keep a uh, one cup measuring cup in the ground chicken or the ground beef or the ground sausage or whatever it is that we're working with at that time. We also keep a one cup measure in our um, onions, our diced onions, or in this case, the green peppers, because that allows us to quickly and easily measure it out and uh, just makes less dishes if it, if it stays in there all day. Um, but when you're working with ground meat, two and a third cups um, is one pound. 
So if you've got your measuring cup in there, it makes it really easy to add it into your bags and know how much you're adding. For these ground chicken sloppy joes, we're gonna add one pound of cooked ground chicken into each of our bags, then three quarters of a cup diced onion, a green pepper that's chopped, some barbecue sauce and tomato sauce. Um, this recipe is in our club, so you can check out the link for that down below. Um, this is just, you know, kind of a, a nice take on your traditional sloppy joes, but if ground chicken is less expensive in your area than ground beef, then it's a great alternative. So there you go. Of course, you're gonna take out that excess air before you seal the bag and lay it flat to freeze. This recipe has been in our rotation for quite a while. It is a really nice summertime recipe because I have even taken it camping and done it in my trailer. And people, I mean, I'm not camping over a campfire, but like Sharla does, because she roughs it when she's camping. But I am doing it in my trailer, on in a frying pan, and people are jealous. They can smell it all over the campground, or uh, we don't camp in a campground much. We do a lot of, it's called Crownland Park uh, Camping, where it's government owned and we can go for free. Uh, boondocking, if you will. So it's an easy one to throw together and it's fresh and spicy and awesome. We start out with lime juice. Oh, we start out with our cod. You can use snapper if you prefer. Lime juice, olive oil, minced garlic, chili powder, brown sugar, paprika, pepper, and seasoning salt. Mix those all together in the bag on the day of cooking. You want to um, thaw it. You can, you can wrap it up in foil and do it on the barbecue, or you can bake in your oven. And me personally, I like to do it in the skillet. And just till the cod is flaked nicely, and I like to serve it with rice and sometimes like a Southwest salad is really nice. It has corn and beans and cilantro in it and it's really good together. This Salsa Verde Fish Tacos is a really wonderful, fresh way to eat some fish. It's got some pineapple and salsa verde, which is a green salsa and just salt and pepper and garlic. It is so super simple. You can make this with almost any kind of white fish. We have made it in the past with tilapia, but this time we are using cod. Now these, there's only two fillets in there, but you can still break them up when you go to make your tacos and um, they, a little will go a long way. So this might look like a small dish, but I promise you it ends up quite big. Uh, you can serve this in hard or soft taco shells and you can cover, you can put all kinds of toppings on it. Um, you know, lettuce, cabbage or coleslaw, diced tomatoes, onions, mango or pineapple salsa because there's already the pineapple in it. It'll be really great. You can add shredded carrots and regular salsa, pico de gallo, jalapenos, serranos, cilantro, avocados or guacamole, cojita cheese, black beans, corn, hot sauce, chipotle mayo, fresh lime, and you could pile all of that on there at once and it would be like that SNL commercial where they're like, taco in a bag. And that's a long one. You should go look it up. It's Andy Samberg, it's really funny. Um, but there's a million ways that you can make this. You're really just gonna wanna fry this up in a skillet for 10 or 12 minutes until your cod is cooked through and flakes easily and go ahead and serve it up. Those of you who have watched our videos for a while will know that one of Christy and my all-time favorite freezer meals is a ground beef stroganoff, which is super simple, but is just amazing. And lots of you by now have tried it and given us your feedback, and it seems that we are not alone in loving this recipe. It is such a good one. But of course, we have to branch out and we're trying to do the ground chicken for economic reasons. Uh, so we created a ground chicken stroganoff and it is pretty darn good. I will say that we don't like it as much as our original ground beef stroganoff one. We actually, as an aside, we have a stroganoff in the club that is, and it's quite different. That one's got cream cheese in it and stuff. 
but um, that one is with beef strips. So if you're a stroganoff fan, we have got you covered. <laughs> anyway, for the ground chicken stroganoff, we've got our cooked ground chicken in our bags. Then we're gonna add some garlic, some sliced mushrooms, a can of cream of mushroom soup, some sour cream, a little bit of thyme, smoked paprika, pepper, and a little bit of salt. On the day that you go to cook this, um, you are going to add a little bit more sour cream or Greek yogurt and some parsley. We always serve ours over egg noodles, so we suggest that you do that as well, but any kind of noodle or rice would work for this. So if you're a fan of the ground beef stroganoff and you want to change things up a little, give this one a try. So I had some cubed butternut squash left over from when I was making baby food. And so I've just put some in a quart size bag. I'm going to add some olive oil, salt, pepper, and a bit of rosemary. Normally I would add some fresh rosemary because I usually have some in my indoor herb garden, but I just don't right now. So I'm just gonna have to <laughs> use dry rosemary. <laughs> I'll survive. Anyway, this will be just, I mean, it's very small, but it'll be a nice little side dish to pull out sometime when we're having one of those chicken marinades or something. This is the chicken asparagus bake. We have a little bit of a twist today because we are going to make it with broccoli. And the extra twist is that the recipe was originally made to be with broccoli, but because Charlotte is allergic, we, um, we adapted it to put asparagus in, but we couldn't find the frozen asparagus. So we are back to using broccoli today. So just like having a giant bag of peas in her uh, freezer to use up, there happened to be a giant bag of broccoli to use up. So we're using that today. The other awesome thing about this recipe is it's a doubler. You want to double this one because it asks for half a can of mushroom soup and half a can of cream of chicken. You might as well double it and use the whole thing. So I am going to make four today and I'm going to use two cans of each. This recipe has cooked rice, chicken that is cooked and cubed, broccoli or asparagus, cream of mushroom soup, cream of chicken soup, cheddar cheese that's been shredded, a bit of salt and pepper, and optional is two slices of bacon that's been cooked and crumbled, and that's pretty much become not optional for us anymore. If we make this, we always add the bacon in. It's really great. So enjoy this one and give it a try for yourself sometime. Cute! <laughs> well, Chris, I, you know, Christy always wears aprons and she has the, the most adorable aprons and the funniest and the best and whatever. I, I never wear aprons, but for you never Christmas, do. Christy got me this Frisbee Mills 101 apron. I have a matching one, but... Um, she added a bow to mine. I added a bow to hers and I cut a little off the bottom and I changed this a little bit so that it fits her better. Because I don't know if you notice, <laughs> but I'm a giant and she's teeny tiny. Yeah, there's and a so, little bit of a height discrepancy. There is. So I, yes, I modified it for her and made it a little more her own. And I added a bow because I'm like, if I'm putting bows on mine, you can have so a bow. Cute. So cute. So this is me and my apron. <laughs> okay. Uh, we did something a little fun for you this time, mm -hmm. which was every time we added meals to the freezer. So we always add two meals to my freezer and then two go into Christy's cooler and then she takes them to her house when it And full. bonus, we're doing this in March. Yeah. And so it was like minus 20 this morning. Yeah. It's cold. Celsius. It's very Celsius. cold. It's cold right now, which is handy for freezer meals. It's a little, I, yeah. go a li I go home a little more often when we do this in July and it's plus yes. 30 Celsius, you know. Yes, we can't leave the, the, even though the meals are in a cooler, we can't leave them on the front step all day. All day, you no. Know. But, um, but this time, yeah, so she runs hers home. So what I did is that every single time we added the, the one recipe, so two meals, into my freezer, I took a photo. And so we can run all of those together and you can watch my freezer get stacked. We just thought it'd be fun for you guys to see the progression. Because, because it's exciting to us. When we're watching it happen in real time, 
It actually, it does. It, it gets exciting. really exciting. And then for days after, anybody that comes to the house, I'm like, do you want to see my freezer? <laughs> like, it's, it's just, and I it's will so like, true. I come down in the morning and you <laughs> open it and you look at because it's like, we oh, worked really hard. We to did. Do. And it's, there's a feeling of relief. There is a feeling of peace knowing that all that food is in there. Yeah. Um, and like accomplishment, right? Because totally. like, um, I did that. I did that. And it feels oh, great. It feels <laughs> so good. And it feels like if it, it is, it's that peace. It feels like, okay, now I know I don't have to worry about what's for dinner because this week when we had started to run out of freezer meals like earlier in the week, the 4 p.m. dinner dread starts to set yeah, in, right? And you're like, I don't know what I'm going to make today. And then yeah. I have to either send my husband to the store to get stuff or I have to figure out a way in between appointments. And, and we live and rural, right? We're yeah. out of town. So it's, it's like you plan your trips. And we can't order, like skip the dishes. Plus that's really expensive and to instant order. And cart can't come here. No. No. So we have to go into town to get the groceries or to, you know, pick up if we did takeout or something. And so that starts to be like stressful. Mm -hmm. Like how are we gonna feed everybody? But we don't have that problem because our freezers are stacked and it, it's looking so beautiful because we're nearing the end of day two and the end of, yes. the, end of the whole marathon. And, and I do have two freezers. So we've been filling the other freezer with kind of the things that the are bulkier and, yeah. and that, don't, <laughs> that don't look as beautiful stacked <laughs> um, <laughs> because I'm vain like that. I'm not vain about myself. I'm vain about my freezer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we have pride in our work. We have pride in our freezers. Um, it's a bit of a humble brag, but man, we're good at this and, and we're pretty proud of it. So we just wanted to show you. For the pizza casserole, in a medium-sized bag, we're going to put two cups of a small pasta. We're using small shells. You could also use macaroni if you prefer. Then in your large freezer bag, you're gonna add two cups of cubed ham, some Parmesan cheese, mozzarella cheese, onion, green pepper, tomato sauce, Italian seasoning, and a little bit of red pepper flakes. You can find the full recipe in the description below. This is one that seems to be a very popular one with kids because it's got the name pizza in it. And it's popular with moms and dads because you can cook it in the slow cooker. So on the day that you go to cook this, you're gonna just toss that large bag contents into your slow cooker and you're gonna cook the pasta that's in the bag on the stovetop, drain it and add it to your um, rest of your pizza casserole before serving. And that's it, just like that, we will have another four meals done. This recipe is called Carne Gisada. It is a Mexican stew that you can serve on rice or you could fold it up in some tortillas and have it in a wrap. It is really spicy and really flavorful and it has actually been around for a long time. Back before we had our club and our videos, we would make PDFs of meal plans and this was in one of those. So it has been around for a long time and now we're gonna show it to you. And it's a new addition to the club, so enjoy. First, we start out with our stew meat. We're going to add two serrano peppers that have been seeded and finely chopped. We're going to add garlic, tomato paste, beef broth and a bit of water, chili powder, some cornstarch, cumin, salt and pepper. We're going to mix all these together right in the bag Squish it all around so it gets nice and marinated. And then on the day of cooking, we're going to defrost it and we're going to cook it in the slow cooker for six to eight hours on low. Give it a try and let us know how you like it. This is called Ham It Up Spaghetti. Christy does not like the name, so. She's making a face right now. <laughs> the name might change, but for now, this is called Ham It Up Spaghetti. Um, I'm going to make, we're going to make four, but I'm, I'm kind of going to double it, like make two recipes in the giant bowl and then 
you know, make another two recipes in another giant bowl. So we've gone ahead and cooked up spaghetti already. We slightly undercooked it, of course, and drained it. We're gonna add four cups of diced ham. Again, that's gonna make, that's for two recipes, or two, um, ser not servings, two meals. And some diced onion, two cans of cream of chicken soup, two cups of sour cream, two cups of cheddar cheese, some dry mustard powder, seasoning salt, Worc Worcestershire, and then we're gonna mix all of that together, divide it out between our two large bags, and then we're gonna mix some breadcrumbs and either melted butter or olive oil in a medium-sized bag, and we're gonna staple that bag on top so that the day that you go to cook this, you top it with that breadcrumb mixture and bake it in the oven in a casserole dish. I kind of thought this would be a fun one because again, ham makes me think about spring and Easter and all those things. And so I thought it would be fun and it's like, seems like a good sort of family casserole. So we'll see how it goes. Um, again, Christy's a little iffy on it, but it might become a new favorite. We'll let you know. <laughs> I wish I had another camera to take a picture of the two of you mucking around with that stupid spaghetti. You're so funny. Well, I did a dry spaghetti on the bottom. This better be good. <laughs> oh my goodness. Where you find this recipe? And for your next batch, either throw it in your giant bowl or divide that spaghetti before you start. Oh yeah. my word. <laughs> the bottom of it's still dry. This is ridiculous. Center bottom. <laughs> this is all on tape. Yes, this is on tape. You're on tape. Your hands are famous. Your hands are famous. <laughs> <laughs> really, we need your backup camera today. <laughs> this is oh my goodness. awful and hilarious. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's so heavy. <laughs> okay. I think <laughs> I'm crying now. <laughs> okay, it's it's gonna be. This is mixed enough. <laughs> this is as good as it's gonna get. This darn well better taste good. <laughs> Now we need the tongs. Okay. <laughs> do, do the tongs. It's a real fail. Okay. Okay, I'm doing that. All right. Ouch, I can't my finger. Okay. Of course, it has to be like. Okay. I think oh my you goodness. can you gotta keep going. 
We're, there's no way that's half. No. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this better be worth it. <laughs> oh my word. Okay, we're gonna have to have like a staff are meeting before you... we start the second one. Okay, it's in. Good job. Okay, yay. All right, do you think, do you think we can get one more? Okay, there's some ham down in there. Get that. I don't even know. Okay. Now that it's only half, I think I could stir this a lot better. <laughs> okay, I can't see anymore because I tried. Okay, so we had That's a little... <laughs> okay, so, so we had a little um, mishap with the um, ham and up spaghetti. <laughs> Which makes me laugh even more because Christy was only so-so on it to begin with. Um, but... I had to have my son come and help me try to stir it. It was so heavy and I couldn't get it to mix. So we tried like a whole bunch of different um, like you, you, stirring utensils. I don't even know how to, and then Christy was trying to help me get it in the bags and oh my word, it, it did not go well. And then we had like a whole bunch of the sauce and ham that didn't get in there. So. On the second go round, <laughs> are we glad that we have like a a second try at this? We have a second try. On this second go round, what we've done is we split the cooked spaghetti into two bags. We are going to attempt to just stir everything else together in the bowl and then scoop it in and then try to shake it up in there. I mean, I don't know that it's going to go any better. But I don't think it could go that much worse. <laughs> and I don't think my arms are strong enough to stir it again in the bowl. So here we are. Um, and of course it happens to be like the last recipe. So we're already a little tired and giddy. And, our problem solving you know, skills are not the best right now. No, our problem solving skills have gone out the window. So <laughs> we're gonna try it this way. Um, we'll we'll see i'm sure hoping this recipe is worth all the tr trouble <laughs> but uh we'll let you know if this i was already better. giving it a four and now it is like dropping rapidly <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know you might be watching fridge meals 101 history here because it might be the only time we ever make this recipe <laughs> here goes take two <laughs> so even though i can't definitively say uh, much because it didn't mix super easily in the bag. This was way, way, way easier. So I would suggest if you're going to attempt to make this <laughs> that you put your noodles in your bag first, then mix up the rest of the stuff, pour that in, and then, um, you know, it, seal it before you take the air out. Um, mix it all around. It'll take you a little bit there, a bit of work, but then, you know, unseal it take the air out to close it when it's mixed in there and uh, you'll have something that resembles a casserole hopefully in the end. This ginger beef is a real winner. We are finding people in our Facebook group saying that they are sometimes skipping out on ordering Chinese food because they love the taste of this ginger beef so much and I agree it is really delicious. We start out with two pounds of beef stir fry strips. We're going to add in thinly sliced onion, minced garlic, grated ginger, some beef broth, and soy sauce. That is it. On the day of cooking, this is one that you want to do in your crock pot and allow those flavors to meld and really let that beef tenderize and then serve it on rice. And you know, if you look through the club and through the website, we do have a number of Asian dishes. So if you wanted to do your own Chinese night, you could make a meal plan of just Asian influenced food and have your Chinese food ready to go right in your freezer. No takeout costs. No takeout. Alongside the ginger beef, these bold Asian flavors are wonderful on the Mongolian beef. This one is extra exciting because it has little carrots cut into matchsticks in it which I always enjoy. So we start out with our beef strips. We're going to add ginger and like yesterday and like other meals, we use the squeezy tube ginger rather than grating our own. 
It comes fresh in the produce section of your grocery store. We are also going to add minced garlic, soy sauce, some water, brown sugar, of course the carrots, and some green onions that have been sliced. Now we are going to put all of these in the bag and then on the day of cooking, you're going to add in a tablespoon of cornstarch so that the sauce thickens as it cooks. This is one that you can do in the skillet, but if you wanted to, you could also do it in your slow cooker. And you wanna serve it over rice with some other green onions sliced. So now we've reached the point in the day where I invent recipes with our leftover ingredients. We already did that with one of the chicken meals. Um, we purposely bought an extra tray of chicken because then we could get it uh, less expensive in the case lot. But um, now we're left with some things. Usually we actually have a lot of ground beef left over, but this time we didn't do a lot of ground beef meals. So we don't have ground beef left over or ground sausage. So all we're left with is a little bit of cooked cubed chicken and some onions. We're always left with some onions. Um, and we've got some frozen peas, of course, a little bit of that left, um, some carrots sliced and diced. Um, and what else have we got? Um, did I say cubed ham? We do have some cubed ham left. So this first recipe that I'm going to throw together is using that leftover cubed ham and some frozen hash browns. I always have frozen hash browns because my kids like to make them for breakfast and some of the onions. And we do have a little bit of um, our cheddar cheese that's shredded left over. We have a ham and potato casserole recipe. It's in the club. Actually, I think it might be on the regular website as well. Um, I am going to make this, except that we don't have another can of cream of chicken soup. So I'm just gonna substitute cream of mushroom soup. So I've got the frozen hash browns, the cubed ham, the onions, the grated cheddar cheese, and then the mushroom soup, some sour cream and salt and pepper. This is a really easy one. It's gonna be nice to have, the kids will like it, and it's gonna to come together pretty fast here. So for this last recipe, I'm just gonna to throw together a really simple soup. I'm gonna add the rest of our cooked cubed chicken, um, some onions, some frozen peas, cause we have them. Kind of debating, uh, I'll add some chicken broth in there, some Italian seasoning, a can of diced tomatoes. I am debating maybe adding a little bit of pesto in there um, and some Parmesan. We've got this really good recipe for a pesto minestrone that has Parmesan and pesto in it. Just not totally convinced it'll work in here, but we'll see. Um, actually, yes, I'm, I'm uh, talking on the fly here, but yeah, I'm gonna add some garlic and those carrots that we have left and the pesto and Parmesan, because why not? Uh, you never know when you're gonna invent a really amazing recipe that you wanna make over and over again, and maybe this'll be it. It is we did it. end of day two, Woo! and I'm really excited to report 140 bruiser meals. Woo! And I mean by the skin of our teeth, because I really thought a giant trap door was going to open in Charlotte's kitchen and drop us through it when we were doing that ham it up spaghetti. <laughs> that was, that was really, it, was it, it really became funny, the suck it up spaghetti. It was, anyway, it's hilarious that we're doing it like at the, the very end when we're already tired. New recipe. <laughs> this is a lot of new recipes. Now we had no yeah. idea it was going to be quite so, such a logistic nightmare. And we're at the end of our day, so we're not really putting things together like... No. Like, this is too small a bowl to be... Anyway, it was but... Funny. It was good. Um, but we're going to keep that in there for you, and uh, you can get a laugh at us. We actually would have ended up with a few more meals, um, but we had a few, like, in the carne gusada, one mm. of the beefs just... It was off. Smelled... I open up the package, and I'm like... Mm. You come give this a sniff because it doesn't seem right and you know food will tell you when it's bad and so. it was 
it, bad. It was off. It was and off. So we only ended up with three carne grisadas. Mm. Uh, you know, we so there's a few things like that. I, I think throughout the video we sort of told you what they were. But so anyway, but I mean, really happy with 140. Like nothing oh, wrong with that. Nothing wrong <laughs> with that. I'm super proud of that. Um, should we give them a little peekaboo? Yeah. So that dun, 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 dun. is my freezer. Of course, Christy's got some in her freezer at home. And then I'm gonna take you over to my other freezer. Um, and I'm gonna tell you in all honesty here why I chose the ones that are in here. Okay, so this is like the ugly freezer. <laughs> <laughs> and so on the top shelf, we've got a few weeks ago, Christy and I made dill pickle soup. We've got a video on that. But but those are lunch size and I love having those. And then we've got our glazed hams that we did this time. I've got a pulled pork in there. That's the only thing I had left from last time. I wanna take that with me on a ski trip we've got coming up. And then I've got, these are all those individual sized ones that we did up today, uh, lots of different ones. And I've got that one side dish one there. And then here we've got well, I call them the ugly ones because it's like the ones that don't stack nicely because we like the freezer stacks, but these don't stack nicely. So these are things like that pork tenderloin and the pork chops and they just, you know, they're, they're just like bulky in the bag and they don't stack nicely. So there you go. That's our haul. We're going to go back to Christy. So there were a number of things that we did that were new. There were a number of things that we did in our club. So if you haven't checked out our club, Please, please, the link is down below. Check out our club. You have a yearly subscription or you can do a monthly now and that's really exciting. We are finding people are really jumping on that. And listen, it was a mega session and we megaized it. So don't necessarily start with a marathon. Um, start We're tired. Small. Our feet are sore. We've got a link down below to that cooking class where you can make just 10 meals, which will give you a really good start. Dip your toe in and see if freezer cooking is for you. We kind of have the feeling it might be. We think it probably is. Thanks so much for joining us and happy cooking. See you next time.